Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you today um, a really simple way of painting bears. This is um, one of the pattern packs I've got and I've taught this as a workshop before um, and it's basically very simple floating onto uh, one background colour for the bear. Um, so I just wanted to share with you really how you do this floating um, technique so that you can um, reproduce other bears yourself. The one I'm going to do today is a slightly different design just for the fun of it. Okay, it's really important that your first coat that you put on your bear is not opaque, all right? So it's not solid, all right? Because all these stroke marks actually add to the texture of the bear. I'm also doing it on um, on a little sort of canvas, small canvas. I love painting bears onto canvas because you get the texture coming through and again that adds to the bear. So I'm just taking a little bit of water as I go. Okay and loosening down the paint and I'm painting each part of the design separately. So this was something I sort of played with earlier on, sort of did some circles and ovals and things and got this bare, sort of a bare shape. And then I used uh, graphite paper or transfer paper to trace it onto my canvas. So by painting each bit separately, you can see where each part of the bear is without putting any more pencil marks on. It's important as well when you do this that you have a light background. So I've got sort of a cream background here, which works really well with bears. Okay, so because the cream is actually going to show through, as you can see, and become almost part of your highlights. You can see it's starting to take shape already. Now very often um, when I teach classes with this sort of um, strength of background, my students feel that they should be getting a solid coverage, that it looks, in their words, patchy. That is what you're after, all right? So don't be tempted to go back and add more. You want it patchy. You want to be able to feel the canvas, see the canvas. Because this will give almost feeling to your bear, bring him to life a little bit. I pick some up in my brush like so and then I blend it out a little bit because what you're after is the moisture of the medium in the hairs of the brush without it being like a blob on the end all right okay now when you're using angle brushes you load your paint on the long side if this was a flat brush let me just show you there you go so there's a similar size but in a flat brush it doesn't matter which corner you load it on okay so take a little bit on the corner, all right. You never load more than a third of your brush because as you're blending it on the tile to get it going from pure color through to clear, working its way through the medium in the hairs on the brush, if you load more than a third, that paint will almost certainly reach the other side. And instead of a lovely soft float like here, so we've got a lovely float that goes from dark through to clear. 
you would have a stripe where it will literally come to a stop on the width of your brush. So load up in some medium, blend it out. Oh, a bit too much there. Corner into the paint. Backwards and forwards on the spot. Now I'm blending both sides of the brush. So by doing this backwards and forwards, when I come to here, it doesn't matter which way down I am because I've gone backwards and forwards and done both sides. We'll do the pads. Okay, and a little bit more like this one we did here, so a C stroke. So I start up on the edge, I come round, lots of pressure, back up, and I'm not twisting the brush, so I'm staying left parallel. Okay, all I'm doing is putting pressure down, pressure off. So I'll do it again and show you. So I turn it. So on the edge, about halfway up. I'm up on the chisel edge of the brush, the edge of the hairs, lots of pressure down, come round, lots of pressure and then back up on the chisel edge to finish off. Okay, a little bit high so we'll just soften that back a bit. Okay. And if you look back at this one, I've got this sort of texture going on around the edge, alright? So I'll bring that up a bit closer, hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do that now, all right. Um, we're going to do it in the same colour, the same colour brown. All right, now for this I'm using a liner brush. I don't use flow medium to loosen down the paints for this because I really do want it more subtle. I don't want it going on too dark. Okay, that's better. So, I've loaded my brush correctly, handle down, uh, hand down rather, handle up on the brush and then just you're going to do this up and up and up so try and be as relaxed don't think about it just think about moving across the tile so you're doing ups and downs and wiggles and it's great for grass as well so moving to the piece Sleeping Bear, very simple, two colours and some medium. Okay, small arrangement of brushes. In fact, I've only ended up using a small and a medium angle. You could use a flat and a liner. All right, and what I'm going to do now in part two of this video, um, I will add some simple flowers, some daisies here so that he's laying, he or she is laying 
ins and daisies here. All right, and obviously this is something where you could add a name um, to really make it personalised. You've got a new baby born, or, or if you just like painting bears like me. All right, so um, as I said, I've got this one as a pattern pack. All right, and in the notes you have, I'll just show you. Okay, so there's the pack your pack, and you've got step-by-step -step pictures telling you as well exactly what you need to be able to paint him or her, close-ups as well, with a pattern at the back. All right, anyway, have a go. Um, I may well do this one as a pattern pack as well once it's finished, but um, yeah, come back for part two and, and watch how I put my daisies on. Thanks then, bye.